When we last left our story, <laughs> the machine was up and running. There were still a few things that I wanted to tell the story about. The computer and the table being the two big ones. So last December, sort of late December, about a year ago, I built a new video editing computer. And the idea with that was that I would use the old video editing computer in the shop to run the new CNC machine and to sort of be the shop computer. So I pulled the old parts out of my big case that holds all of the hard drives that I need for the, for the video work. And I had a smaller case that I put those old parts into. And I actually started with one case that I thought would be nice to have, but it was a, an old workstation case and it had a, a funny on-off switch and it didn't really have spaces for the hard drives or the, the parts that held the hard drives in place weren't with the case anymore. So it was just gonna to be too difficult. So I just used a different case. It was a long two or three days of putting parts in and pulling parts out and, and getting things working. <laughs> So the new old shop computer can come out to the shop. And for now, it's just going to sit on the end of the table. I can start to put together the electronics for the CNC. I wired up the power supply, which is pretty straightforward. You just take a power cord and cut one of the ends off and strip the wires. And then there's just three spots to put the three wires. So it works pretty easily. And then from the power supply, I can wire up the stepper driver. So the cords from the motors run into this board, which is the, the G540, and it's a, it's a stepper driver. It takes the power from the power supply and it translates it into the pulses for the motors. So the, so the motors will move based on what's coming from the computer, which is what's in this cord. So it's sort of the signal from the computer and the signal from the power supply kind of get mixed together in this board and sent out to the motors. Um, so that's what's going on here. And it's, it's a little bit of a mess. I just kind of plugged it all in to make sure it was going to work. At some point, I want to build a, a box for the computer that will sort of keep it away from the dust and then do a little bit better cable management down here. I had one last little piece of the rack gear to go onto the X and Y axis. And I had one, one length of the gear left, so I had to cut that into three pieces. And I wasn't sure how that was gonna go as I had thought the gear would probably be hardened steel, but it cut just fine. I did a little bit of a trick where I used the two ends of the piece that I cut to butt up against the ends of the existing gear on the side of the y-axis so that the teeth would line up easier because it wouldn't be based on my cut. And I could do that because I could use the mirror image on each side so it, it worked out. And in the last video someone asked about how the gantry moves back and forth and it runs on the rack gear that runs the full length of the y-axis. And the next big thing to do is the tabletop. So I put down a sheet of MDF and I had the same issue with the frame being warped as I did with the side rails. So what I needed to do is put some spacers under the end of the table so that the top of the MDF will be closer to flat and not curved. So I cut some spacers that got thicker as they got closer to the end. I raised the piece of MDF up on a post and then I could glue the spacers to the underside of the MDF by placing them on the, the struts of the frame and then removing the post and letting the MDF drop down onto the spacers. Once I had the first layer of the table in, I could get the gantry parallel to the table. So that's what I'm doing here. And I wanted to lower the gantry just a little bit. It didn't need to be as high as it was. Now I wanted to screw that piece of MDF to the frame. And I wanted the screws to be set below the top surface of the MDF. So I drilled holes with 
the router to sync those screws into the MDF. G-code is the code that runs the motors, and it's what's generated by the software when you send it a, a drawing or a shape or something. And I had heard it was really simple, so I did a little bit of research for a few minutes, and yes, it's really simple. So I wrote a few lines of G-code that would have the router drill three holes across the surface of the table. And it actually worked. <laughs> it was amazing. Then from there, I could put in self-tapping screws into the steel frame that would hold the MDF in place. Now, once the first layer of the table was in place, I could then use the machine to surface that piece of MDF. And what that would do would make the table perfectly parallel with the machine itself. So it's sort of as though this whole process has been getting closer and closer to getting this accurate. So the table was pretty close, but it wasn't perfect. Putting the sheet of MDF down was a little bit more accurate with, with the shims and the flatness of the material. And then this last step gets it as perfect as it can be. To make it more perfect than this, I would need to make the machine itself more perfect. <laughs> In this process that I realized I had never really squared up the router to the table. So I, I did a pass and realized that it was off from side to side and I, I fixed that. And then I did another pass and realized the whole gantry was out of square to the table. So I had to adjust the wheels and the little arms on the gantry to make that square or pretty close to square. <laughs> then the next step is to put another layer of MDF on top of the first layer. And the top of that sheet of MDF should be pretty close to flat. I modified my little bit of G-code to have it drill eight holes across the width of the top layer because I wanted to have the screws that held the top layer in place also sunk below the surface so that I would run less of a chance of hitting them with the router. It was at this point that my friend Jonah came by, which I knew would be a big help, but it ended up being a, a really big help. It, it turned out that I had the X and Y axes flipped, and I think the Y axis upside down or a mirror image of itself or, or something like that the big thing that we did is we cut T-slots into the table so that I can put in hold downs for the different things that I'll put on the table. I've gotten a couple of comments about doing a downdraft table or, or a suction table, I guess. I had always thought that they took a big vacuum pump to do that, but it looks like you can do it with just a shop vac. I think once this table gets worn out, I might actually try and do something like that. So the machine's basically done. There, there's a few last things I do want to do over the next probably few months is one, like I said earlier, is to, is to build a box for the computer and, the, and that stuff so that it's a little bit away from the dust and it's a little bit cleaned up with all the wires and stuff. And then for the, for the monitor and the keyboard, it'd be nice to build a little desk here so that I don't have to use my cart <laughs> to do that and I could make it all a lot smaller and neater and, and just nicer. Um, and then, a, and then a, a big thing that I want to do is to hook the dust collection up to the router because I'm finding it, it gets real dusty real fast. <laughs> and so it'd be nice to have something come down from above that, fo that follows the router around. Now I figured I'd do one little project with it at least. There's a whole bunch of things that I want to do with this new machine. One of the things that I would really like to be able to do is to do inlays. So I took a stab at that. And cutting the hole or the pocket went well. Then cutting the plug to go into it was more of a challenge. I have a lot to learn about holding pieces down so they don't move when they're being cut and holding the piece down that's being cut so it doesn't come flying out of the hole. <laughs> I did finally manage to get a piece and cut to the right size. I've found that you can't just cut 
the hole and the plug at the same size. They won't fit. You have to shrink the plug or widen the hole by a few thousandth of an inch so that they'll go together. But after four or five tries, I did finally get one that, that fit pretty well. And I jointed that surface down. I think once I get my drum sander up and running, this is what I'll use it for. It turned out pretty good. It's not perfect, perfect, but it, it's pretty good. <laughs> as far as the software end of things, I've got Mach 3 as, as the controller software, and that, that seems to be what's, what's used a lot, and it, it worked with the motors and the parts that I bought, so that, that's why I have that. As far as the cam software, I'm still a little bit up in the air. I'm trying a few different things. I'm completely open to suggestions. If folks have things that they like and they're, that they're using, um, it kind of sounds like the, the freebies aren't so great. I could be wrong about that. And the ones that work well are really expensive. So it's, it's sort of, what do you do? You, you, you build this big machine that can do all this stuff, but you still got to drive it somehow. So I need to figure that out. Thanks for watching.